This is Andy Tube. This video is the sewing test of Stella, a Singer Model 237 that I finished restoring. Uh, as usual, when I get a machine, I don't see if it sews or anything. I just start dismantling and testing and cleaning and put it back together and adjust. And then I see if it sews and what other adjustments it may need. And uh, as part of the finishing up, I finished polish, polishing the the uh, original slide plate here, and it came out real nice. So I'm glad I just transferred the spring from the new one I bought onto here. And while I was working on it, I realized, I think I know why that spring gets broken so often. Because one time I went to pick up the machine and move it, and I almost broke the spring myself because I'm used to the Singer machines having a solid end here. So I'll ha I have to remember if I want to move it to pick it up by one of the corners or the back side or the front side, something like that. But anyway, that, that polished up really nice. I'm, I'm very happy with how that turned out. And uh, as I also usually do once I'm finished finished up with it, um, I, I wax it once with this uh, Meguiar's Cleaner Wax, um, just to get my oily and uh, dirty fingerprints off of it, you know, from all the handling that I've done on it. So I did all the covers and the base and, and everything about the machine. Um, I, I can even put this on plastic. I didn't put it on this one because this is, uh, it's not a shiny type of plastic cover plate. So I didn't put it, but I, I got some on it here and here and there while I was waxing the body and it comes right off. Um, and the, the um, stop motion screw here also, I... Um, polished up a little bit. It was in a lot better shape than the um, slide plate, but I polished that up a little bit then. And then the arm cover plate up here had uh, quite a few uh, light scratches in it up here, especially around the spool pin and um, up around this area. So I used my favorite um, plastic polisher which is just this uh, seven or eight dollar bottle of Rain-X headlight restore and uh, it works real good for me I've used some others before and I've used um, polishes that cost about twice as much as this but just for using a, a damp applicator and and polishing it up in uh, circles and then uh, wiping that off and rinsing it good, it it it, it uh, removed about 90% of the scratches, not the deeper ones, but all the little scratches and hazing and stuff. Uh, I didn't need it on the cover, the nose cover, that was in pretty good shape. So after after that, the last thing I do is I put a couple coats of this uh, Meguiar's gold class carnaba plus paste wax if you've maybe you've seen me use this in some of my other videos but i just put on a thin coat and let it uh let it dry real good and then use a cheesecloth to get it off and buff it up and i do two coats like that sometimes more uh it depends this this uh model different than like the 301 the uh, 401 and the Rocketeers uh, because of the 70s it has a little bit of an orange peel a little bit of texture to the paint so there wasn't really any scratches uh, on the bed like I'd see in a lot of those so I didn't have to polish it with anything but I did put a third coat of the of the wax just on the bed because it gets the most handling and the most wear so let me get these out of the way here, and uh, 
I'll get started on this test here. Oh, uh, one other thing. Let me do this. I put a... Uh, when I put the light fixture back on and stuff, it didn't have a bulb when I got it, so I put in an LED bulb. And I, I, I'm, I'm happy with that. I like that white light that it puts down on the work area, nice clean. Um, this one has about 60 some um, emitters. Uh, now, when I buy from Foxy Finds for You on eBay, hers have like 104, 108. So it, it is more brighter than this, but this is still better to me than, than a typical 15 watt bulb, uh, incandescent bulb. That, and uh, this, I don't know, I think it uses 3 watts or something. So, anyway, that, that finished up everything for me. And uh, let's go ahead with this sewing test here. Now, let me lift this up and take off my protector. I usually start to with uh, just a, a Kleenex tissue, you know, like a little facial tissue. That's something that's kind of uh, delicate and um, easy easy for me to test the tension because I'm going to sew with a light uh, very light thread tension because I don't want this to pucker and I'm and I also use this to test the uh, pressure of the presser bar because I can turn it left and lighten it up uh, quite a bit I don't need a lot of pressure on this to make it feed through. So I'm just going to start with a straight uh, stitch here. Uh, and I act, I'm actually using the foot pedal which I usually do by hand. But let's let's see how this goes here. finished I want this take up to be all the way up because that means the that the hook is the farthest away from the thread so when I pull this out it'll come it won't be hung up on the sewing hook now I'm using this uh, purple on the top and a white on the bottom but I do have a balanced stitch. I'm using, I'm setting this uh, at less than two, about one and a half tension, which for light work is good. And if you, if you think that the stitches are slanted here, it's just uh, the size of the needle hole versus um, this paper. When I do the lock stitch, it's it's so thin that the locking between the bobbin and the needle thread, thread uh, kind of twists the paper there. And it, it looks like a slanted stitch. Mm, sometimes if, if you, you do a very fine close stitch, which, which you really should do on something that's this light, uh, sometimes that will eliminate that look if you're trying to get a smooth looking top stitch. But I have to say I like the way the machine sounds with all those uh, slides in there instead of the steel gears that I'm used to it's a pretty uh, whoop, a pretty quiet running machine down below the bed so there's my super fine stitch there okay so I'm I, I, I'm good with that now I could go with a lighter let me just turn the tension down to about one half and let me bump my stitch back up a little bit to about 
oh, number 15, I guess. And see how that looks with a le little bit less. Almost zero. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. It's all pretty fast. Yeah, it's it's such a delicate the paper. But I'm I'm happy. I'm happy it's not it's not puckering up, it's not too much tension. So I have good light needle thread tension control. Let's take something let's take something a little sturdier here and uh I'll use a folded over layer of a lightweight muslin, muslin material and get my threads to the back here and get this in here. I'm going to go up on tension now. Uh, close to two I guess would be about right. And um, Let's see, there was something else I was going to, well, let's, let's just, so maybe it'll come to me in a minute here. Mm -hmm. right, just let me look at my tension real quick. It's good. We come over this way. Actually, let me just stay kind of on that line. And I'll go to a zigzag, uh, one, two, three, about a three zigzag, and see how that looks with this lighter tension. Somebody commented on one of the videos that they had this machine and liked it and it's got the pre prettiest zigzag stitch of any of her machines and it is a nice looking uh, zigzag stitch. It is a nice looking zigzag stitch. Let me get over closer to the uh, edge here and I'm going to just I don't have a special purpose foot on this machine, but just let me see if I can do a little bit of satin stitching here. Just to see if I can uh, get my uh, feed real close together. Oh, I remember now what I was going to say. Um, some people have commented about I don't hold my thread tails. You know, when I start sewing, and, and I know that some of the old singers said to do that, but what I have found is most of the manuals will tell you, start your sewing with, with your take-up lever all the way up, because then the, the stroke is going to be down. When you start with this in the down position, and, and, and the that this pulls up it's it's pulling the thread with it and because your thread isn't locked stitched or it is not in the mm, fabric yet it will uh, pull the thread out of the needle so that's why they kind of say but to, to hold on to your tails and I remember my mom doing that with her model 15 when I was a kid but I, I usually just start with sewing with this in the same position because this is where it should be when you remove your work. So that's where it is after I finish. So I just make sure it's up there when I start. And uh, let's see if I can... I'm going to turn this in here and get see if I can get below less than 20 stitches per inch here. And that same number three width and let's just see that's up in the fine area for sure yeah that's not a problem let me twist it a couple more and see <clears throat> let me get up a little bit more so I don't know where I'm at 25 stitches per inch maybe
Yep. Now I'm I'm kind of at a neutral point right here. It's not sewing forward anymore. It's not sewing reverse. So that's about as fine as I'm going to get. Okay. And let me just get it back up there. And <clears throat> I'll go to a more normal uh, length stitch of about a 10 or so. But I want to do the wide zigzag too, make sure I'm not going to get a needle strike or something that needs adjusting. Yeah, it looks really good. It does, it does make a pretty zigzag. That's, that's a fact. So here you can see where I was at about 20 and then kept getting a finer and finer to where I got into a satin stitch, more like for a buttonhole and stuff. So I'm, I'm happy with the uh, needle tension. Uh, I'm happy with the width. Uh, it sure does make that pretty zigzag. That's a number four width at number 10 length. Nice. And it's locking the stitches at the, at the, at the points, you know. So I would say it's pretty balanced and I'm on a, I'm on a number two width for that, uh, or two, uh, number two tension for that zigzag. When you sew zigzag, you definitely want a lighter tension. And when you're sewing fine materials, you definitely want a lighter uh, tension. So, let's go to something a little bit uh, firmer here. This is upholstery. This was left over from recovering a chair my wife did. And it's pretty, pretty uh, strong, durable material. It's folded over here, so I'm just going to run a straight seam and a zigzag on it. And uh, see how that, that's pulling out? So I think I need a little more pressure foot pressure for this little bit sturdier material. So I'm just going to give it a couple of good turns down. and Yeah, that looks pretty good. And I can probably go up to more like uh, number three thread tension here for a straight stitch. And let me turn that out and see how this looks. Oh, I left it in zigzag. <laughs> okay, that's cool. Let me turn it around here and... and uh, then I'll, I'll come... I'll angle over and do a straight stitch this way. Let me get the needle out of the fabric to take it out of zigzag and back to straight. Mm -hmm. And then I'll start with my take up lever in the up. I'm just going to angle over this way to get through to the double layers. Oops. Take up lever up, pull out my work. So there is a nice, okay, there's the zigzag I did first. That's at the long length, number six, and that was still at four wide. And that's a good tension. See, I don't have any needle thread down here showing on the bottom. And up on the top, I don't have any of the white um, bobbin thread th showing and then here not not that straight line but you see this curved one where I came over that is the straight stitch and I'm hoping you can see it doesn't have that curve like when I sewed on tissue paper that it's as straight a straight stitch as can be there let's look at the back side there's the, the white zigzag, and here's the straight 
uh, stitching with the straight white uh, bobbin thread on the bottom. Voila! Happy, happy so far. Let's uh, just take some jeans here. They they already have a hem. This is a factory hem. And this was uh, my wife took up a pair of jeans for somebody, one of her friends. So I want to I want to sew along. Um, I want to sew along that seam. And then I want to come down here and go over the side seams because I think that would be four layers, right? Or even even more because these the hem seam is folded back in. I don't think this machine is going to have trouble sewing heavy duty stuff. In the owner and then owner in the instruction manual, it talks about what needle and thread to use for different fabrics and it's got listed you know canvas and duck cloth and heavy heavy stuff uh, denim so let's see I want to show that per well I'll just sew on the inside here like this then right so let me get back about here and see I don't have a genoma jig or anything, but I think we'll see if this little swivel foot can can go over. That's that should be enough tension on the presser foot. I'm going to go up to about three and a half um, thread needle thread tension, number six length, and let's see how we do with this denim. Okay, yeah, it went right through all that. It has to be four layers at least, maybe, maybe more. But it didn't, uh, you know, it didn't even hesitate. If you can, you can see that purple stitch. I tried to stay on the outside there, but it went right over the double seams there. This side might be easier to see because it's white. Mm -hmm. So it's, it wasn't really a problem for the denim at all. Um, let's see, what did I do? This is the muslin. Let's take this and let's... Um, this is fleece. For me, it's kind of thin fleece. I, I don't... You know, I don't know, but I'm going to double it up and I think I'm going to put it inside this uh, muslin to just get like some layer effect here, kind of like if you're doing a quilt or something maybe. Right, get that. Get that all the way up into the original seam there. So just remember, I'm not, I don't sew, I don't quilt, I just do the mechanics, right? <laughs> That's probably obvious to you, right? Already. Okay, but let's get, uh, let's get under there. And I don't know what uh, stitch length is for something like this. I guess I'll go uh about a 10 maybe and i'm going to go straight and then uh later i will go zigzag through here but let's let's see how this does if i got enough pressure foot yeah okay with my needle out i'm going to switch over to uh a number four as wide as it will go and I'll stay about a number 10 or 12 uh, length so f four wide and 12 long yeah. yeah 
Yeah, these old vintage machines can't beat it. And the, the traveling hook seems to be working very well, doesn't it? So there's my straight. And here's that pretty zigzag. Let's see on the back side, it's, it's white, white on white, so that's going to be harder to see for you, I'm sure. But no problem. Um, let's see, I don't remember what machine I was testing with this, but it's um, a couple layers of percale, a layer of the muslin, this is Sunbrella outdoor fabric, and this is a uh, thicker fleece, and this is a nylon webbing. Um, so maybe I'll, maybe I'll, well, I guess I'll, I'll sew on here. It's going to be hard to see the thread either way, but let's see if I can get this under there. There we go. Get my thread untangled there. <laughs> if I kind of run it along this side, we'll be able to see it. And I guess I'll stay with a zigzag and instead of straight. And then I'm going to reduce my tension a little bit because I've got quite a few layers to go through here. And I'm doing a number four zigzag. So I'll go back to uh, a little bit less than three. And then while I was sewing along, I went from a number 10 or 12 to eight seven six like that made a little bit longer and longer stitch while I was sewing so you, you can see that zigzag pattern right there and on the back here it is nice and balanced you see there's no purple thread down here and then you can see here where I started making longer and longer uh, stitches through there but the main thing uh, that test is for is just just for power how how is the machine do with one two three four five six seven layers of that and these are not all hard materials but it's quite a variety and the umbrella is very sturdy and really these singer machines they sew through this nylon um, strapping and stuff just like butter it does that really good if you I have done some yard tools and uh, a few camping things where I've, I've sewn leather pieces to this and old canvas bags to uh, strapping on a pack or a belt or like an old army World War II canteen canvas canteen holder I sewed the back of it to one of these uh, for a canteen belt like that and that, that works very good okay I guess that's uh, getting everything pretty much where's my little piece of belt here and let's go I'm going to put this back in straight and a nice long um, Stitch. Did I pull my needle thread out? I'm not seeing it here. Oh, I almost, I almost did. <laughs> I really should put a heavy-duty needle on here. This is just a uh, standard sharp point number 14 needle, which is for medium weight fabric. Um, so I should have I should have put like for all this probably a denim needle, you know, maybe a number 16 or 14 denim, a little bit stronger shank. And for this, you you should use a leather needle that has a little knife on the tip instead of a just a point. 
but um, this is a this is a pretty new needle. I've only tested one other machine with it, so it shouldn't shouldn't have any problem. Now I'm going to put I think a little more presser foot pressure, and you can use a walking foot if you will sew garment leather and stuff, or you can use a roller foot. Just put a little bit, a couple more turns of that to make it, to make it uh, sturdier. Oh, presser, yeah. Okay, with just a, just a standard sharp point needle. And I'm going to do about a three and a half, I think, tension. And let's see. Da -da -da. <laughs> like butter. All right. Pretty straight stitch. Nice top stitching this machine would do, huh? So, I mean, this is a domestic machine. You see them advertise industrial strength and all that. This is a home sewing machine that Singer made in 1970. So the longest stitch is a number six, a little over four millimeters. You know, I think the industrial machines can sew up to six or eight millimeter length. But wow, what a great versatile machine to to do just about anything you want to do at the home. You know, be, besides delicate um, things and t-shirts and clothing and tablecloths and curtains and you can do draperies and upholstery covering and it does so a vinyl very well and you can get a you know a twenty dollar walking foot if you get too many slick layers and have some trouble with it you know wiggling around that's usually the problem with this, um, when you get multi-layers, is the feed dog has teeth, but the the presser, oh, it's a little bit loose. The presser foot on the bottom is just smooth. So it starts pulling the bottom layers faster than the, than the top. And that's when you get the layers start going like this while you're sewing and you break a needle and break stitches and stuff like that. So with the walking foot, the foot actually going to lift and drag at the same time as your feed dog. So it's kind of like pinching it along like that. And then you don't get all that slip and slide stuff going on. So if you're going to be sewing things like that, I think a walking foot would be a good investment. Just remember this is a low shank, straight shank. It's it's not a slant machine that uses slant presser feet. This is a Singer low shank, very very common. You can find the vintage pieces, and you can buy new kits where the the feet are snap on, and you can buy like thirty different feet with with the clip on shank and the thumb screw you know for 30 bucks and so to your heart's desire okay let's go ahead and do a about uh yeah let's just do the number four i figure if it'll sew the widest stitch <laughs> you know it'll it'll sew the narrower zigzags if you want to do buttonholes and stuff and i'm going to go with um about a number 10 stitch length. Oop, sorry, my foot pedal slipped away from me. Oop, see? Gotta start with this all the way up. That's why it was pulling the thread back and trying to go from under this heavy presser foot. That's why you heard the motor straining. But if you start with this up and head it down, 
it should just go like crazy. Oh, you know, I didn't I didn't sew in reverse on anything, did I? Let me sew reverse on this uh, belt here with the zigzag. Better make sure my reverse works, huh? Yep, forward to finish it. Okay, stop with it up at the top so I can pull out my work. My thread won't be stuck on my hook. And let's get my crazy lamp over here. Get this down here where we can see it. <clears throat> so this white straight um, was from when I sewed uh, up here with the straight and then I flipped it over to to sew the zigzag this is the top for the purple and this was my reverse and back and then you can see the bottom bobbin side of the zigzag I'm I'm happy. I'm done. I am done testing, and I'm very satisfied with the the results. Um, got my needle bar centered. I I have my tension all cleaned up and replaced the part and adjusted, zeroed out pretty nice. Um, my zigzag worked. The straight worked. I didn't test sewing left, center, right because I can just see the needle bar move left, center, right when when I move the you know thing. And if it'll sew zigzag, it'll sew left and it'll sew right. So no worries there. Got my new bobbin winder. Uh, friction ring, the rubber tire on there. Got my height adjusted good for fill. I put in my LED light. There's really just one more video I want to do with Stella. And that is, a, uh, re very recently my wife was at a garage sale and found for sale uh, for 15 bucks Stella's little sister, Kara, C-A-R-A, Kara, and Kara is a model 239, and Kara is a straight stitch only, so it's like 237, but straight stitch only, no zigzag, no sliding zigzag, no traveling hook down here. But the same motor, the same setup. So my next and last video for this will be having the two machines uh, side by side for comparison to look at. The 237 Stella Star and the 239 Kara. Kara means darling. <laughs> it's a darling little machine. So be sure and come back and check the last video of the Stella series, then you can meet Kara. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Uh, putting up with my sew off. Hope to see you next time. Take care.